Have you ever seen a tiny white fluffy bug just gently drifting through the air? Some people might think it's just a little piece of white cotton or a clump of pollen floating in the breeze, but I'm not sure if you ever heard of aphids before, but these are woolly aphids. Let's take a closer look. Aphids are very small, pear-shaped, soft-bodied insects that can range in color from green, brown, yellow, black, red or pink, and gray. They range in sizes from 2 to 4 millimeters or 1 16th to 1 8th inches long. They can be found throughout the northern hemisphere. There's about 1,350 species in North America, 5,000 worldwide, and about 250 uh, some people consider pests. They all have mouth parts for sucking plant sap and juices from stems, leaves, and even roots. We covered leafhoppers in other videos. On top of their other amazing characteristics, they suck the sap and plant juices with their specialized mouth parts and excrete a sugary substance known as honeydew. The aphids too suck in juices and excrete honeydew, which is rich in protein, from the cornicles on their back. Ants love this sugary byproduct and will protect the leafhoppers and aphids. If this sticky substance isn't all collected by the ant, it could lead to sooty mold on the plant or surrounding area, but the mold itself does little if any harm. Woolly aphids and other plant sucking insects can transmit powdery mildew. It's a white fungus that grows on parts of some plants and above the ground. It's generally not a cause for alarm it's just sometimes considered unsightly. Not all aphids can fly, but these woolly aphids can. They've been nicknamed cotton fairies, angel flies, fluff bugs, fairy flies, snow bugs, ash bugs, fluffer fairies, and poodle flies. These woolly aphids produce a filamentous waxy white covering which resembles the look of cotton or wool. The adults have wings and can fly to new locations where they can lay eggs. The nymphs will often cluster together to form large cottony masses for protection from predators. Many of the numerous species of woolly aphids have only a few host plant species that they'll visit during their lifetime. They'll alternate feeding between two or more different host plants and will migrate between them seasonally and even overwinter on them. Their life cycle can be either egg, nymph, adult, or just nymph, adult, because they can give birth to live young. If eggs, after hatching, the nymphs develop through four increasingly larger instars before maturing into adults without any pupil stage. Reproduction for these woolly aphids is mostly done by females bearing live young asexually. That's a reproduction mode in which a new offspring is produced by a single parent. The new individuals that are produced are genetically and physically identical to each other. They are the clones of their parents. They have a lot of predators. Many things feed on little insects like ladybugs, ladybird beetles, earwigs, damselbugs, lacewings, rove beetles, hoverflies, uh, wasps and spiders, all kinds of birds and woodpeckers will even eat them too. They typically overwinter on elm trees as eggs, frost-resistant diapausing eggs. Diapause simply meaning the delay in development in response to regular and reoccurring periods of adverse environmental conditions. Then they hatch and reproduce for a few generations before migrating to other trees for a new summer host. The overwintering eggs produce only wingless females that will give birth to live young. A female then reproduces for 20 to 30 days giving birth to between 60 and 100 live nymphs. The nymphs look just like the adults but are just smaller. 
Then after several generations, when the food supply is starting to become scarce or the area becomes overcrowded, winged females begin to appear. Some of the offspring will start to develop into adults with two pairs of membranous wings. These winged females will fly to new host plants and produce more generations of wingless females. So isn't this all fascinating? These wingless females are also called stem mothers and they can reproduce without fertilization throughout the summer and produce living young. So that's what we're finding is these winged females finding new host plants. These winged adults fly to new host plants and in late summer both male and females are produced and after they mate the female will also lay eggs that can survive the winter. And in even warmer climates there might not even be a need for an overwintering egg stage and continuous generations can just occur. So yeah let me know if you've seen these little guys floating around your area. In conclusion the white woolly ball appearance is just the result of wax gland secretions and although they're controlled by their natural enemies which there are a lot of aesthetically damaging numbers can occur and if they do they can be controlled by horticultural oils insecticidal soaps and other traditional insecticides thanks for watching